So now this is going to illustrate how local coordinates work. So I'm going to exit out of bend gizmo subobject mode. What I want to do is I want to move my object in this direction here. But with the move tool, by default, I'm only able to move in the coordinate axes of either the viewport I'm working in or the world coordinate system. So the world coordinate system is the master reference for the whole scene, and that's essentially our grid. The orientation of that coordinate system is shown at the bottom left of each viewport. And you'll notice that when you select an object, any object, by default the move gizmo is going to be oriented with the world coordinates in a perspective view. But what I need to do here is instead of moving this in world coordinates, which is a little bit uncontrolled here, and hit control Z to undo, I want to move it exactly along its own axis. And that's called local coordinates. Each object in your scene has its own coordinate system attached to it. And that's called its local coordinate system or local space. And the center of local space is the object's pivot point. What I need to do here is I need to change my frame of reference so that when I move, I'm moving relative to the object's coordinate space and not relative to the world's coordinate space. That's accomplished by going up to this pull-down list here that says Reference Coordinate System, and by default it says View. So I'm going to switch it now to Local, and watch what happens to my Move Transform Gizmo. Okay, I'm going to switch to Local Coordinates. Click on that. Boom! Now you'll see that the Transform Gizmo is aligned perfectly with my box and I can move along that axis rather than being constrained to moving in world axes. I can go over to my perspective view and get in really close on this just like before and since I've already chosen my coordinate system and I've clicked on the Y axis I can actually click anywhere and drag on this and get a fine tune adjustment. I'm, I'm not clicking on the transform gizmo at this point. I've already chosen my axis. Okay so that's that's plenty good enough. Then we can make some adjustments. I'll hit Alt W and once again go back to the reference and see if we can figure out if that's basically the right shape and size. It's pretty close. Maybe it could be a little bit narrower. But I'm going to defer that judgment for later. I can always change it after. So now we're in a good point to actually save again. So believe it or not, I'm going to save basically after I create every piece so that I can always go back. So once again, I'll go back up to the application menu, click Save As, and press the plus sign. And these files are very small, so don't be afraid to create lots and lots of them. You can have 20, 50, 100 versions of the same thing. And that's a good thing because you'll always be able to go back and reload an old scene in case you've gotten into trouble. It does happen to the best of us. It happens to beginners and experts alike. At this point, I want to make my final adjustments to the proportions of this back piece because I'm going to make a destructive change here in a moment. So I won't be able to go back from there unless I load an old scene, as I was talking about a minute ago. So I want to make sure that I have this right before I go any further. The next step I'm going to take is a fairly drastic one because I'm going to convert this object from a parametric model to a so-called editable model. And the difference there is that a parametric model has modifiers with parameters like the bend angle and so on. But you don't have the ability to go in and select individual sub-object or component parts of the model. So with a parametric model I don't really have the ability to go in and for example select this one edge here and chamfer it to create a rounded surface. As you can see from the reference, we've got a little bit of a curve up there. So to do that fine level detail work, I'm going to have to convert this from a procedural model or parametric model into a so-called editable model. So just like editable spline, there's also object types for polygon meshes, specifically the editable poly, and editable mesh object types. So we're going to use editable poly because it's got a little bit newer features. It's a little bit snazzier and fancier. So I'm going to right click on my box 
and go down to convert to convert to editable poly. Now watch closely what happens in the modify panel when I do this. Editable poly, boom. Now there's no more modifiers, there's no more bend, no more taper, and no more box primitive. It's all been reduced down to a simple polygon mesh object. So this is sometimes called collapsing the modifier stack. And you could think of it as basically you're baking a cake. When you have a procedural model, essentially what 3ds Max is doing behind the scenes is it's recording a recipe of the object. You know, it's instructions on how to create the object from these very simple base primitives and, in this case, parametric deformers. Every time I would load that scene with that procedural model or parametric model, the program reconstructs it from scratch. So that's very different than what we have here. This has essentially been baked. It's been finalized and converted into something that we can adjust on a micro level, but we're not able to adjust as easily on the macro level. Collapsing the modifier stack is a destructive act, and you'll never be able to get those modifiers back. So it's very important that you save before you do so, as I have done here. So I've collapsed the modifier stack by converting to editable poly. And now I've got the ability to go in and select individual sub-objects. Just like with editable spline, you've got vertex and segment and spline. Here you've got different types of sub-objects for polygons. So I'm going to just do one little thing here. I'm going to choose the edge sub-object mode. You'll see it highlighting here as well. I'll get in really close. And I want to chamfer this one edge here. So I can select that. Maybe I'll change my object color to make it a little bit easier to see. I'll just choose some other color. So there's my red selected edge and I want to chamfer that edge to create the rounded corner. Alright, so here in the Edit Edges rollout of the Modify panel you will see Chamfer. And next to some of these tools you'll see a little settings box. So in this case, I do want to open that settings box because it's going to give me more control. So I'm going to click on that and I get a little dialog opening up. And you'll see the preview here. This is showing me a preview of an operation that's not yet performed. I can adjust the chamfer amount and try things out. That's pretty cool. I can increase the number of segments. Don't need many here, probably only three. And I can play around with this and get it exactly the way I want it. But nothing's really been performed yet. Again, this is just a preview. Now, if I click Cancel, the dialog is going to close and nothing will happen. It'll just go back to the way it was. Go back in there again. If I hit OK, then the operation will be performed and the dialog will close. So then I've just completed the operation. I'm going to undo that to illustrate to you how that last button works. Going back in once again to show you the Apply button. And this is the one that's most confusing to new users because what happens is people will click the Apply button and then they'll be very confused by what they see and kind of freak out when they see this. Don't panic because what you're seeing now is another preview of an operation that's not yet performed. And basically Max has kept the old selection and now it's applying another chamfer to that selection. So if I just click out here to select nothing, and nothing is selected, now we're seeing the true state of the model before the preview. So this is a bit you know, daunting at first. It takes a little bit of getting used to. If I select other edges, I will start seeing a chamfer preview on those edges. Okay, and if I wanted to actually perform that, I would hit apply, but I actually don't. I'm finished with this. So I'm going to click Cancel. Okay, so we've got our chamfer finished. Cool. 